Welcome back to Royals Franchise 8 and 14. We kind of started to get it going a little bit in April, unless the day was Friday, in which case we did not do especially well. The right side of the screen doesn't look great from like Thursday onward. I guess we lost every Thursday, but Mondays, Tuesdays, especially Wednesdays, were pretty good. What does that mean? I don't know. I really I don't have nothing to say about it really other than you know what I think we're starting to find our stride seven and three in our last ten we're doing some scouting we're trying to you know find the best players in the draft obviously and we don't pick especially high because we were really good last year we made it to the World Series got destroyed by the Dodgers but we're not going to be picking very high in the draft at all as a result which you can still find good players down the board. You just might miss out on a generational one if there happens to be one of those guys in the draft. I said this year that I wanted to focus more on the minor league players, and I think we did that in the last episode. You know, we, we checked out what Juan Soriano was up to. Kind of a slow start, to be honest. Hopefully he really gets it going. Gavin Cross is working towards a call-up. But if you look at this team, we have a lot of players that it's going to be tough for them to find long-term homes in our team, in my opinion. When you look at all of the outfielders that we have, Elijah Green, Gavin Cross, Spencer Jones, you know, we traded for a lot of these guys, and then Juan Soriano is a potential outfield option, as is Dyrone Blanco, of course, as is so many different players on our team, Eaton, Fitzgerald, all outfield eligibility. It's going to be very interesting. At AA, I'll tell you, Fernando Morales is quite interesting. He's only a 57 overall at 22 years old. That's really bad. But his A potential is high 90s. He's hitting quite well at double A, which was an aggressive placement for him. It is only 18 at bats. I still don't really expect much from him. And then Morgan Gilly is probably my favorite outfield prospect. I find him to be a center fielder with excellent speed and defense just the arm is a bit lacking it's up to 40 now though and then Rhett Park another high a potential player a lot of swing and miss to his game not great defensively but at some point we are probably going to make a move for a pitcher I like my pitching prospects I really do and we called up Robert Gasser and uh he'll make his MLB debut for us I believe this season, of course, made it in 2024 with the Brewers in real life. Not too long ago as I record this, but we kept him down for a while. We have a lot of lefties in our rotation, but I've not been very impressed from, you know, what Brady Singer has given us. Chris Bubich is getting it under control, and Frankie Montas, every time we call him up, just gets shelled. Mazzucato has not even been impressive at AAA this year. So at the deadline, Asa Lacey was not impressive last year for us either. At the deadline... I love where our bullpen is. Neris is getting shelled. Hopefully that comes down. Our entire bullpen is actually getting a, 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 just obliterated. Oh my goodness. Phil Maton has been a completely terrible experiment. He sucks. Luizic is always amazing. Carlos Hernandez has been amazing for us. Kershaw has been great. Matt Strom in their long relief roles. And then MacArthur needs to get it in check as well. But I overall like where the bullpen is. We might be trading some of our prospects for another starting pitcher. I like Kyle Wright a lot. The top three in our rotation is amazing when Dylan Cease comes back from injury, of course. Torn Peck out for two to three months. That sucks. We made a big move for him in the offseason, gave him a big contract, but a good deal for us, really, in the end. We might need more pitching. Can never have enough of it, especially in the postseason. So we'll see what happens. We also could go out and make a big move for a big bat. But I do also quite like the lineup. So I don't know. We'll start the simulation here in May. Probably do a little bit of a check-in with the minor league guys at some point. But let's go ahead and jump in. Nolan Gorman, two homer day. We're looking for a third. And you can see our team rankings here. Home runs, we're going to hit home runs. That's kind of the way we've constructed this team almost by accident. But it's been working for us. On base, 11th right now. Top half of the league. But I'd still like to do even better than that. Look at Nolan Gorman's numbers, by the way. Can you see that under my name? Or under my face cam? You may have been able to. Insane numbers. And this might help even more. Deep to left. If it's fair, it's gone. And it's a three-homer day for Nolan Gorman. His third homer 
bounces off the foul pole, and Yoel Payamps cannot believe it. Less than 100 miles per hour off the bat, Gorman goes oppo taco to make it a three-homer game and put us within one here late in the ball game on the road against the Brewers. We got to take another look. I mean, it was a fastball, middle, middle, belt high for Nolan Gorman. A little bit late, maybe, but certainly got enough of it. The only question was whether it was going to be fair or foul, and he kept it fair, but it wouldn't matter. We end up losing 11 to 9. Three homer day for Gorman. Unbelievable. Maybe the first time we've done that in this series. JD Martinez with a homer, Bobby Witt Jr. late in the game as well. But we were out hit badly by the Brewers. And it continues to really seem to be our bullpen that struggles. Phil Maton, he's really working towards a DFA. I don't know how much longer I can put up with Phil Maton being terrible. That's unacceptable. Double A reliever Pedro Rios, zero ERA with 13 Ks in 10 and two thirds innings. Pedro Rios could be working towards a promotion. And then a triple A, Sammy Infante, 0.84 ERA, striking out about a batter per inning in 10 and two thirds. And. I'm tired of the bullpen blowing games. Phil Maton, he's got a 12 ERA. He's still under contract for two seasons. But this is just unacceptable. He wasn't good last year. He's somehow way worse this year. Uh, we're going to send him down. Figure it out. Even John Schreiber has not been very good at AAA. Sammy Infante, welcome to the big leagues. Five pitch mix, four seam slider, fork at 91, by the way. Holy. That fork ball is like a changeup, pretty much, right? It's just a super wide grip. Circle change at only 84, a two seam at 94. What an interesting pitch mix. Well, hasn't seen the big leagues in two years. 27 years old. You're going to get a chance. I'm interested to see what he can do. Control's terrible. Pitching clutch is terrible. Control walks per nine. Not great, really, but... He was good. John Schreiber just not pitching all that well in the minors. ERA can be a little bit misleading for relievers because of the sample size. But, you know, I, I just... I felt better about the Sammy Infante call-up. And did he get action in that last one? He did. One inning, one strikeout. Nobody... Or actually, he allowed one hit with the one whip. Didn't walk anybody, though. But not bad. And J.D. Martinez has a two-homer game. Adrian Hauser, somebody that can allow a home run or two, doesn't throw especially hard, more of a sinker cutter guy, if I recall, pitch to contact type guy. If JD Martinez can get maybe a cutter moving away or a sinker darting back towards the zone, we know about his power to the opposite field. We'll see what we can do. Could look for a three homer game for the second time in the same series, at least with the Royals. Obviously, the other one was uh, Nolan Gorman. Hanging slider. Kind of dropped a little bit lower than expected. We're up 5-0 right now, so we're doing great. But this would be, you know, the cherry on top of the Sunday. Although I'm not really a cherry guy, to be honest. Not really a cherry guy. Not particularly relevant. Although I will say, when I was a kid, I really liked Shirley Temples. The the, uh, the drink. And you know what? The actress. What a phenomenal talent. <laughs> uh, Salvi Homer. Royals end up winning 6-2. to two. Chris Bubich struck out 10. No earned runs in seven and a third. He's really getting it going as well. MJ Melendez, two for five with a homer. Now, who gave up the runs for us? It was James McArthur. Dude, what is his deal? Is it crazy to consider moving him out of the closing spot for right now? I don't know if it's crazy, but... Got a 7.71 ERA. And just keeps not performing, really. It's early. And it's not like I feel very good about Sam Mole moving in there. Lewisic has been really good in his role, but I guess he could be our closer. Carlos Hernandez maybe as well. Nara's still pretty bad. Oh, Bubich though. I mean, this guy's on fire right now. This is a real breakout season. Whip under one. It is still early, but he's been amazing. Okay, Robert Gasser, MLB debut. We made a trade for him from the Brewers. And he's actually going to miss the Brewers, of course, by one game and take on the Red Sox. We're going to play our lock with him and see what he has for us. 
He's a lefty, not particularly overpowering stuff. 93 mile per hour fastball, slider, curveball, changeup, and two seam. Continues to get a bit better. I don't know that he's ever going to be a top three type of guy in our rotation. But, you know, four or five, I could see that being a good fit for him. I think he is MLB caliber. Just does his timeline make sense with our timeline? We're in a win now mode. Our farm system is still not especially good. But I would be potentially trading Robert Gasser if it came to it, right? We're up 1-0 early. We'll see what his debut has in store. First pitch is a four-seamer at the top of the zone, fouled back by Masataka Yoshida. We have a lot of lefties in our rotation as well. I don't want to have too many because there are more righties than lefties in baseball. It never hurts to have a bunch of lefties, right? But you lose the platoon advantage. Yeah, if we were in a series, for example, with a team with a lot of right-handed bats, which is a lot of teams... Well, they're going to have the platoon advantage against the lefties every single game. We have Reagans and Bubich is pitching well now. And now Gasser. I'd be okay with maybe two lefties in the rotation. The bottom line is how good are they, right? But three starts to push it a bit. We have a bunch of lefties in the pen. You know, Kershaw and Strom are our two long relievers. And they've been very good in their roles. But I don't want to really just overload with lefties, you know? And it, you got to be careful pitching to the green monster here. It comes up on you pretty quick. 3-10 down the line. Got to be careful. That's why you kind of don't mind pitching the lefties in. But you also don't want to give them something to turn on. But to right field, I, I get the pesky pole down the line. It's really, really short. But to uh, to right field, really short by the pesky pole. But like 380 all the way out there. So we'll see. Just try to uh, stay away from the middle of the zone. Marcelo Meyer has been excellent this year. Top prospect in real life for the Red Sox. And Salvi, if you didn't see, gave us a 3-0 lead on a two-run homer. Giving Gasser a bit of a cushion. Our lineup has been great. Just our pitching that has really let us down lately. The bullpen was a strength of ours. This year, I, I don't know who I could rely on outside of Loisaga and Carlos Hernandez. Strom and Kershaw have been good, but Mole, Neris, and MacArthur is our closer. Super disappointing. Brown ball, this could be two. Witt Jr. goes for the flip. What are you doing? Step on the bag, Bobby. It's a double play to get out of the inning. Could have been tough. Could have been a tough turn. But the flip, I mean, you give yourself no chance. As will face Kyle Teal. A lot of lefties in this lineup. Of course, first round pick, I believe out of Virginia. Catcher for the Red Sox now. Has made the the uh, the move to the big leagues in real life. Still probably at least a few years away, but we're in 2026 now. A lot's changed, but Gasser gets another ground ball. Double play, out of the inning. We're doing great. What a debut so far. Ryan McKenna's hitting 355. He's been an Orioles outfielder. I think he's moved teams this year. I can't remember where he is. I think I actually traded for him, if you can believe it, in Reds franchise. Just wanted more defense in the outfield and speed off the bench. But uh, he had some stretches where he was a decent hitter for us. Maybe he's just a good MLB The Show bat. Sitting 355 in the nine spot. Still probably quite a small sample size, but that's pretty good. As Gasser induces another ground ball. Strike three, Gasser, first MLB punch out. Vaughn Grissom, the former Brave. Great work from Robert Gasser through three now. Only one hit, nobody, or maybe one walk. But very good so far. That one's laced by Devers. Fastball down. Devers goes right to it. He's a really, really scary batter to face. Just has unreal power. Great bat to ball skills. He is far more than just a power hitter. But he is a very good power hitter. Ground ball. That one's going to sneak through. Could be a bit of trouble here for Gasser in the fourth. The first two batters have reached. That one hit fairly hard at 92. Nothing crazy. Good pitch from Gasser, but didn't fool anyone. And this could be two. Witt Jr. with the flip. Gorman bare hands throws to first. Double play. 
That was rip, though. 100 off the bat for Mayer, or Meyer, excuse me, just right at the shortstop, Bobby Witt. We caught a bit of a break there. Gasser's starting to get hit a little bit hard. Am I not throwing the fastball enough? It's not overpowering. But if we can locate it, we might be able to find success. Typically, I do like to keep it up in the zone. There's strike two. Lucky. Didn't locate it exactly where I wanted, but great spot nonetheless. And strike three! O'Neal down looking. Uncle Charlie drops in there. Curve off the bottom of the zone. Gets the call. Maybe a bit low. But if it touches the zone, with two strikes especially, you got to be swinging. And Story down looking. Too close to take. Yeah, too close to take. Strike three. Story down looking. Who struck out to end the last inning? I thought it was Trevor Story. Was it not Trevor Story? Tyler O'Neill. That's right. Hopefully I didn't say Story the last time. Kind of I, In my head, I, that's who I thought it was, though. <laughs> Look at the fan behind... Uh, Teal, by the way. Why is he, like, looking straight up in the air like that? That can't be comfortable. We also got a Red Sox fan with a green hat. These guys are not loving the way the game's going so far. Is he asleep? I can't tell. You see who I'm talking about, though, with the green hat? I don't know. That's going to be another base hit. All the lefties finding a way to get on against Robert Yasser. You'd think the, the righties would be the ones doing damage, but... I think only lefties have uh, got hits in this one. Ground ball. Could this be two? We're covering the first base bag. No return throw from Witt. Runner out at second at least. Ground ball up the middle. <laughs> Another lefty's going to reach. What is up with all the lefties? That changeup continues to eat though. Easy to get to two strikes. Grissom's fouling him off. Could we go challenge fastball? I'm afraid to give him a pitch to pull up and in. He hits it pretty well to center. Fraley ranging back makes the play. Gasser through five. They haven't been completely clean, but through five with zero earned runs. Only 69 pitches as well. That's quite a debut. Devers shot to center. Fraley should be able to make a play on this. Back at the track. 400 foot fly out for Rafael Devers. Slider, ground ball, up the middle. Meyer reaches. Had him 0-2. Another lefty has dribbled a ground ball through the middle for it. How does this keep happening? Get a double play. Ground ball. We've seen a lot of them this game. Witt Jr. goes to first. Inning over Gasser through six. Shut out through six innings in his MLB debut. Again, not completely clean. But the result remains the same. That one squeaks through. Finally, a righty's on base. That's not a strike? I can't believe it. Gasser can't believe it. I mean, that's pretty clearly in the zone, right? Maybe a changeup. Not really a super effective pitch, lefty-lefty. But I'm afraid to go back down with a breaking ball. Here's a fly ball. It's going to be played off the wall. This could be the first run for Boston. It surely will be. Good speed around third. It is a double for Kyle Teal. And the Red Sox are on the board. Is that it for Robert Gasser? Looks like it might be. He will be relieved by Hector Neris. 7-4-5 ERA. Please don't blow the game. Oh my god, he blew the game. Shocking. A Gorman solo homer and a Witt Jr. RBI double. Make sure we don't lose this one. Holy cow, dude. My bullpen is terrible. Actually, it was not Neris. It was James McArthur. He's being sent down as well. He's done. He's done. You don't get to play anymore. We don't get to have a whip at 1.9. That's about two batters allowed per innings pitched. He's going to AAA. And then from AAA, welcome back to the big leagues, John Schreiber. Jonathan Loisaga will be our new closer. He just doesn't really allow runs. And that's kind of what I'm looking for. So he's a great stopper, you know, right in the middle, but now he's going to have to be the closer. Gasser ends up with a three ERA. That's pretty good. Two earned runs on eight hits in six innings. 
Only three strikeouts. Should have been a fourth. I mean, we were cheated. Absolutely cheated, but not bad. Matt Strom was moved. Where's Matt Strom? Oh, I just, he wasn't popping up. Okay. 21 and 15, 7 and 3 in our last 10. Twins are pacing pretty well. When do we play them again? Ooh. This will be a good series. We have Singer, Bubich, and Gasser going. It's a four game series. And that could be pretty big. Cole Reagans. Oh my goodness. Up by two. Bases loaded. Two outs. He gets Ryan McKenna. Only four strikeouts. He's allowed seven hits and three walks. Ten base runners to reach. Zero earned runs. How do you even manage that? Well, he's got to get out of this jam. Base is loaded. Two outs. It's the nine hitter. He's 0 for 7 this series. I've lowered Cole Reagan's velocity. Four seam is now averaging 96. That doesn't mean it can't, you know, get up near 100. But with re uh, less regularity, there's 96. McKenna swings through. We're going back to it. That's got to be strike two. Got to be. And this is not a guy we could afford to walk. Brown ball. Michael Massey can't handle it. One run's going to come to score. Here's the play at the plate. Number two is in. It's tied. The ball was just hit too hard. I mean, I'd like that play to be made by Michael Massey. But the ball was hit too hard. 100 off the bat. And now it's Rafael Devers. Slider, ground ball. Also hit very hard. But we are out of the inning. Reagans ends up giving up two. It's a makeable play at second base, but it's a tough play to make. And now we're going to have to hit. Oh, that was a pitch to hit. It's a cutter right down the middle. Cutters can really, really get rocked in this game as well. Bobby Wood Jr. kind of struggled a bit this year. We thought he had a, you know, a monster breakout season last year. He was done being bad. Nope. Hitting just 238. Slugging near 500, though. Swings through a fastball. Maybe a bit late. Nope. Pretty much perfect timing. Maybe a tick late. Even though it's good timing. 2-2. Two -two. Bobby Wood Jr. hitting third today. I love when the CPU says, ah, we're going to change your entire lineup. I like Witt Jr. hitting first or second. But that's just me. Come on, Bobby. Ooh, change up to hit, in my opinion. A little early. A little early. Fouled back. 3-2 inside. J.D. Martinez will hit with runner on first. A lot of speed. Is Bobby Witt down to 97 speed? It was 99 at the start of this year. He's like 26. What's going on? That's not a pitch to hit. What am I doing? Is that going to drop? It's going to drop. Oh my goodness. What a swing choice for me. Witt Jr. to third. J.D. Martinez to second. A bloop double. Puts two runners in scoring position for MJ Melendez. Homered already in this game. Although he's been very cold this year as well. It's amazing we've been as good as we have been with our stars. Not playing like stars. And I will call MJ Melendez a star because he was top five in MVP for us last year. Pretty incredible. And that is a really tough pitch to hit. Out in front. Cutter on the black. Infield in. Got to make contact. Fastball in off the plate. Ball one. MJ can do damage here. But I, I prefer just to get a run in. Just guaranteed getting a run in. Fastball fouled back a bit early. We're a bit early. Just got to sit back a little bit longer. Just a bit longer. Fastball down. Ball two. A little bit close on that one. Not going to lie to you. Scared me. That is a hanging curveball. Tried to sit back. Shot it the other way, but foul. Two and two will do it again. Two on. In a 2-2 ball game, Cutter in off the plate. Full count. Jake Fraley on deck. He hits righties. Come on, MJ. Big pitch here. What do you got? Defensive swing. Witt Jr. fakes but doesn't go. Got a little bit antsy. That's ball four. Very easily. And they're going to intentionally walk Jake Fraley to set up the double play. Force at any base. And it's the catcher, Freddie Fermin. He does hit righties, but I don't know. I think we're going to go 
to Nolan Gorman off the bench. Had the day off. He's hitting nearly 370 with 14 home runs. This is not who you want to see come off the bench if you are the Boston Red Sox. Nine-game hit streak. Well, I'm sorry, Nolan. It's on the line now. Top eight. Ground ball up the middle. Fielded by the second baseman. Gorman's got to outrun the return throw, and he does. Run scores. We take the lead. Just missed both a double play and a hit. Bad contact for a good swing there. Michael Massey, two for three in this game. Although hitting just a buck 81 on the season. A massive spot. I think we pinch hit here. Do we go to the Pasquatch? Yeah, we're going to. We're going to go to Vinny Pasquantino. Come on, Vinny. Big hit here. Strike two. If we just didn't reach off the play with MJ Melendez, this inning could have been huge. But we did. And now we only get one run as a result, and we know our bullpen cannot be trusted. Might go to Loisaga for two innings, to be honest. Pitch to hit, just can't stay back. Fastball. Hit on the ground. That's the inning. We had our opportunities. Really could not capitalize. And now Gorman's going to play second. Salvi in the catch. And hopefully... Cole Reagan's only at 81 pitches. He's going to stay out there. Double play means end of the inning. Cole Reagan stays strong. Ooh, that might be a hit. Nick Prado goes the other way. If that hits off the wall, we might be looking at two. And we're not. Get back to first, Nick. We'll take a leadoff hit. Saw five pitches that at bat as well. Worked back, you know, down in the count. One and two. And we go the other way for the top of our order. And we get Michael Garcia against a lefty. He's hitting 273 this year. On base 100 points higher exactly. It's a great on base. OPS near 800. Fantastic. He's doubled already in this game. What can you do, Michael? If we can somehow work a walk. I don't love a 3-2 game, but 5-2? 6-2? If we really open it up, would be really nice. We might just keep it at 3-2. Nearly a double play. We just can't stay back or stop chasing off the plate away, it seems. We're going to warm up Jonathan Loisaga. But I think Cole Reagans might come out to start the ninth. Pitch count's only like at 85, maybe. Pretty reasonable. That should be a base hit. Kyle Isbell. Hanging change of down the middle, good timing. 93 contact against, against lefties. Swung and missed. Fastball down and away. Stays on it, goes the other way. And it's Bobby Wood Jr. Runners on first and second. One down. No, that's not an 0-0 swing. We don't need to cheat on the fastball. It's at 91. Just sit back. No, it's a rollover. And that's going to be a double play for sure. Just so slow away. 91 pitches now for Reagans. I thought it was closer to 85, but nope, into the 90s. That's a quick out. He still gets lefty-lefty matchups. Strike at the top of the zone. I mean, this game is Cole Reagans to lose now at this point. I'm comfortable putting him near 100 pitches, and Garcia lays out in foul territory for out number two. What a play by Michael Garcia. Playing on the line and for a reason. Shot the other way. Was fouled by many feet. Didn't matter. What a play by Garcia. And Tyler Nevin. Final hope for Boston. Cutter hit it. Bobby Witt Jr. And that is the ball game. The Royals win a nail biter. We had plenty of opportunities. As did the Red Sox. Bases loaded. Two outs. Uh, they did get two, but couldn't make it a big inning. And that ends up being the difference. MJ Melendez, solo shot. I don't know what we would have done without it. Lose, maybe? We're up 9-6. Jake Fraley, 11-game hit streak. And we're going to look to win another game in a row here. I think we're up to maybe five, pending the results of this one. Up to 59 home runs as a team. Third in all of baseball. 
And Fraley will have a good matchup here against the righty Isaiah Campbell. Former Mariner, I believe. Fouled away. That's what we got to do. Sit back if it's away. Can't be rolling over. Hitting 323 is Jake Fraley, by the way. I know he's only hitting against righties. And that average now is going to drop a little bit more. But that's a great season. He'll get one more chance against the lefty. Runners on first and second. He almost considered laying down a bunt in this spot. But that's a pitch to hit. Hanging curveball. Fraley doubled up. Not what you want. 10-6 is your final. Salvi, two homers. Melendez homered. Vinny Pasquantino and Michael Garcia each with three hit games. Kyle Wright, he got shelled in this one. But the team picked him up. Six runs in the fifth. And that pretty much ends up being the difference in the game. That is five in a row as we look to face the Twins. This is a huge series. This will decide the leader of the AL Central right now. And I do, I do believe we get Cole Reagans in one of those games. We got to Joe Ryan uh, earlier in the year, right? Where's Minnesota on here? We murdered them, right? Where was that? Ah, this series. Joe Ryan got crushed. But he gets another chance. And we get another win. That's six now. Hershaw picks up the W. That's seven in a row. As Frankie Montas is down. We're going to keep him active. Tyler Gentry. We are going to keep on the 10-day IL. We got a lot of guys that are still going to be hurt. Gasser against Paddock. And there's a loss. But we are exactly even with Minnesota. 25-16. and 16. This next game, Reagans against Ryan, will decide the leader of the AL Central. For now, it's early. And we will jump into the game. Minnesota up 6-1. Looks like they got to Reagans a little bit in the fourth. Let off with a run as well. And then three runs in the eighth. Uh, we're going to need a miracle here. We're jumping in for Freddie Fermin to 69 home runs in the year as a team. Nice. Also, oh, Freddie Fermin... Hitting for his life. 333 average, 921 OPS, and only 33 at bats. But this is someone that could have potentially been traded at some point. He still could this year. He's been very disappointing this series. We've kind of just kept him around for his defense. You gotta have a good defensive backup catcher, for sure. But his hitting numbers said that he should have been okay. Good contact against Wright. And we just really haven't seen it a ton. Maybe we're finally seeing it. 2-2 two -two now to Fermin. Got a piece of that. Thought it could have caught the plate. 98 miles per hour on Legend. Sometimes you get some bad swings. That was one of them. But also, 80 on Legend gets some bad swings for me. I just chase off the plate. Ready for Fermin gets plunked. And uh, we can't get a rally out of it. He got hit for nothing. Vinny Pasquantino and flamed hit. Or flamed hip. He's going to hit the IL for one to two weeks. We're going to put him on the 10-day. And that means we got to change our lineup a little bit here. So he was our four-hitter against righties. And Nick Prado, I think, just slots in perfectly at first base. We'll give him a bit of a chance. And, of course, change the order quite a bit. Well, maybe not a ton. I like Michael Garcia hitting... Hitting ninth, but I think we move him up to 8th in this scenario. Zalby's struggling, maybe even 7th. I mean, Nelson Velasquez has been super bad. I'm okay, lefty-lefty. Uh, we're going we're gonna to do that. Ooh, that's four straight losses. That's not ideal. But J.D. Martinez seems to be locked in one way or another. Three for three, two homers and a double. Ten total bases for J.D. Martinez. Are we at Baltimore, though? He does have great power opposite field. Probably not going to pull a home run out in Baltimore. Especially not in the rain. So maybe we get that cutter away from Tyler Wells. We can go Apo Taco. And there is the cutter. Down the middle. Hit hard. 108 off the bat. Right at the second baseman. And that's the game. 1-1. One, one, top 8. Two outs for Jake Fraley against Jonathan Heasley. No idea who that is. I really don't. I'm sure he's going to end up being a beast now in five years. We'll look back at this and be like, how do you not know Jonathan Heasley? I have no idea. Is he somebody we should know? 
No, he is not. We will not be looking back on this in five years. <laughs> no shot. Ah, why do I keep doing that? They don't want to pitch to me. Oh, oh, they want me to chase. Why do I keep doing it? Pitch the hit! Ray Fraley! Deep to center! This could be a grand slam! And it's a no-doubter! No question about it, Jake Rake Fraley gives us four runs all at once. 4-13 to dead center. Eat shit, Heasley. You fucking bum. 5-1 Royals. You can't hang a curveball to Jake Fraley like that. He'll make you pay. He will make you pay. And that game should be just about over. 5-1 here in the eighth. Good luck. Jake Fraley. Whew. He got all of that one. And we did win. 5-3 is your final. Who keeps allowing these runs late in the game? It's making me super annoyed. Clayton Kershaw this time. That's actually okay. Hernandez was very nice. Loisega. I mean, they still have zero ERAs. I mean, they've been incredible. Gorman with another two homer day. Is it really just a couple guys in our lineup that are boosting everybody up? JD Martinez and Nolan Gorman. Jake Fraley a little bit as well. Gorman's average has dropped, but he's hitting 350 with an OPS near 1150 and 17 home runs already. Tyler Wells plays a lot for this team. Gorman gave that one a ride. Deep to center, but not deep enough. Nolan will get another shot here. We're up 9-1. Is this Heasley again? Oh, this guy stinks, but he, he's getting away with it. 106 off the bat, line out. Two really good swings from Gorman, but couldn't find it. We end up winning 10-5. We blew it again. Two runs in the eighth, two in the ninth. That actually might be Loisaga this time. Nope. It ends up being Neris for two. Infante's got a 6.75 ERA. Oh, had a clean inning. Er unearned runs, I guess. Or no, Kyle Wright pitched deep in the game. That's what it is. He, his ERA is up to 4.48 now. Oh, no. Bottom seven, two outs. Sammy Infante has like eight pitching clutch, and it's bases loaded against Alex Verdugo. Verdugo's been a nice little player for the Yankees in real life in 2024. He's had his ups and downs already, but has overall been a nice... Kind of a spark plug for the Yankees, especially defensively. Whether they're needed or not, this guy's constantly a diving for the ball. Big at bat here with two outs. Ground ball up the middle. Gorman lays out, keeps it in the infield. No play at first. We just get the ball in. Yankees tie it up. That's great. It's Aaron Judge now. Aaron Judge is not really who you want to see in this spot. I mean, we can challenge him. Swing and miss through a fastball on that occasion. We got to get him to chase. Ground ball at Michael Garcia. He's going to stay tied at one for now. We got to go hit. And we have bases loaded. Scott F. Frost against Jake Fraley. F. Frost has not pitched in a while for the Yankees. Really has been injured. Jake Fraley has an OPS at 955. Efros has a funky delivery. One out. Don't get fooled. Maybe take the first one if, unless it's really good. That's better. If we can just get one in the air towards right field, we have a decent shot to get one out of here. The short porch is real here at Yankee Stadium. Ball two. Great take from Fraley. Not even close. Get a pitch to hit. Something to elevate towards right field. That pitch actually would have been, to be honest. That pitch is. Fraley gets some pretty good wood on it. We should be able to tag on this. And here that attempt is. To the cut. To third. Out at third, but the run scores. Great uh, relay from the Yankees, but I think I think we'd make that, that gamble again and again. And that Loisega got to save it. Jason Dominguez is the nine hitter. Loisaga has been great this year, but his pitching clutch is not especially high. We got to keep that runner from getting to second base. Ground ball double play would be amazing in this spot. Good pitch. Dominguez jumps off the plate. Let's give him something to hit hard at the third baseman. How about an elevated heater? Ooh, he didn't chase. 
Good at bat from the Martian here. Jason Dominguez. Full count now. 3-2. It's got to be a sinker. Ground ball. Gorman lays out. Keeps it in the infield. But everybody's safe. Loisaga against his former team. We now need a ground ball double play from Anthony Volpe. That, that's a little bit too much played. Oh my goodness, we caught a break. Slurve down the middle. Not a great spot for it. But a strikeout. Volpe reaching for the slurve off the plate. We needed that one. And now we need a double play. Verdugo, please hit one on the ground. I do not want to face Aaron Judge. Absolutely do not want to do that. Verdugo hitting 362 with runners in scoring position this year. King of clutch. But Luizaga just doesn't have that put away pitch. They just continue to fight, foul it off. But maybe not. Back to back strikeouts. Verdugo tosses the bat. He is visibly frustrated. And now, do we work around Aaron Judge? I mean, I don't want to give this guy anything to hit. 0 2 on Judge. We got to get him to chase. Get the fastball up in on his hands. He was ready for it. He jumped it. Hits it really hard, but really foul. Ground ball just got a piece of it. That slurve is a monster pitch. Got to keep going to it. Loisaga, three straight punch outs. And we win another nail biter. Yankees put up a really good fight. But we just did it. I mean, like, just enough. Just enough. Vinny Pasquantino on fire right now, hitting 299. OPS at 870. He's not injured anymore. It's time to get him back in the lineup. And, I mean, we're going to hit him pretty high in the lineup. Gorman has slowed down since being moved up to the cleanup spot. But I'm pretty okay with keeping him around there. I mean, Nelson Velasquez is really slumping. Had an unreal year last year. He was pretty good in 2024, but it's time to consider something else. He's just not doing anything. MJ Melendez, by the way, hitting 205. I mean, his OPS has dropped from 980 to 660. Kind of looking like a one-year wonder right now. We're going to move MJ Melendez down against lefties. Dropping him to six. Hopefully he finds something there. Strom has been unreal in the bullpen. But I might want to switch him with Kershaw if I can. Just because... Nope. Just because... I mean, Strom should be getting more innings. Kershaw is getting a lot of innings. He has way more stamina, to be fair. But, I mean, Strom's been our better guy. Neris is working on being sent down. It's been terrible. schreiber has been good. Infante experiment is not working. Mole is still bad. Loisaga is yet to surrender an earned run. But I might have to start considering making a move again. Frankie Montas. Pitching really well, but he's done this to us before. Josh Taylor could be working on a call-up. How's Maton doing? He's been excellent at AAA. MacArthur, still terrible. I'm going to send Neris down to try to get him right. And then we're going to call... We're going to call Phil Maton back up. I'm a little bit afraid to give him another shot for right now. And maybe he's just not as a setup guy. I think he was in middle relief, though. Maybe, you know what? Maybe I try it. Maybe I try it. I'm going to leave Sammy Infante up. But in this second uh, second setup spot, I don't think he's going to get called on to pitch very often. So we'll see. Schreiber can be set up. Probably should be Hernandez, though. Let's make that change. Yankees have scored two in the ninth. This is our home and home, so we are home now. We get home field advantage, which is a leg up on the Yankees. Need Strom to shut it down, and then the bats, you're going to have to face a good reliever, but you can do it. Just need Strom to get us one more out. Got him jammed. Kyle Isbell playing left field today. Who's in center? If Kyle Isbell's playing left, Jake Fraley... So Kyle Isbell got the uh, start today, I guess, against a righty, which is unusual. Could have been a pinch hit, I suppose. Pinch hitter. Ronnie Baseball in the game. Ron Marinaccio against Salvador Perez. 3-3. One swing could end it. 
Salvi struck out. MJ Melendez on the bench. We're gonna give him, we're gonna give him a shot here. He's replacing Nick Prado. Where is that in the lineup? Well, I know. Well, I know it's. Uh, I meant like in the field, third base. Michael Garcia is gonna come in as a defensive replacement. I want to give MJ Melendez the AB. He's hitting 206 on the year. OPS under 700. Break out of the slump. Good timing. A little bit late, maybe. We can't miss that pitch. 3-2. We worked it back. Bobby Wood Jr. waits as the leadoff man. OPS at 800 for him. Starting to turn it around. How do we chase that? How do we chase that again? Doesn't matter. Bobby Wood Jr. gives us a ride. Deep to left. Get out of here, ball. Game over. Bobby Witt Jr. walk-off homer. And he may have found it. He may have found it indeed. Didn't even go 400. Didn't have to. Sneaks over the wall. Royals win. Oh, my goodness. The MJ Melendez AB was extremely frustrating. Just, I'm locked in. I'm locked in. I'm locked in. Boom. Three and two. How, why am I chasing garbage? Doesn't matter, though. Bobby Witt Jr. picks up his teammates. Wins us the ball game. One swing. That's all it took from Bobby Witt Jr. Sam Mole injured. Good. We're going to keep him active, though. We have enough of a bullpen to get by without him. Uh, Dylan Shrub no longer injured. He's going to go on the bench. Chandler, uh, Chandler Champlain. Broken hand. We go on the 15 day. And then we'll try to win a close one against the Cubs here. Sammy Infante on the mound. I think he's been kind of bad. This is a really, really tough spot. I would say he's probably going to end up getting sent down if things don't go well here. I get that I'll be controlling him here, but he'll probably get sent down. He's got a 6.35 ERA. It's just, I don't know if he's ever going to be a major league guy. Pitching clutch is just too bad to be a reliever. We might get lucky with a double play here, though. You never know. Good pitch. Forkball strikes out Ian Happ. Love that pitch. Sammy Infante got him way out in front. Now we actually have a base to work with for Nico Horner. He's going to need a base hit now to get in the run. Great spot on the slider. Try to do the same thing with a fastball, but up. Fouled back. Let's try to even go higher. Good spot. Horner gets a piece, but he's, he's way off on it. He's going to keep trying to raise that pitch up. Finally, Horner is able to sit back. I'm looking at fourth ball for strike three. What a take. Slider in. You have a base to work with. Horner chases, but doesn't miss. Fouls it off. Change up. Changes speeds and sends Horner back to the bench. Great inning from Sammy Infante. And that should be enough to win us the game, you'd hope. And it is. 10-9. Vinny Pasquantino with a pair of doubles. Velazquez went two for four with a homer. MJ Melendez two for five with a double. If those guys can get it going, we're really going to start scoring some runs. And you saw that with 10 in this one. Also, hold on. I saw seven runs in the eighth. Who did it? No way this guy, Phil Maton, keeps getting away with this shit. Uh, he's going to get... I was going to say DFA'd. I'm, I'll look for a trade partner. I can't keep doing this. Okay, we're going to make a trade. It's an interesting one. We are sending Phil Mason, Frankie Montas, and Asa Lacy over here. I just I just don't think he's ever going to be a staple in a rotation. He's 26 years old as a prospect. I don't know when we're going to get him a shot. He's going to be traded. I know he's a royal in real life, but we have a trade lined up that I think benefits us here. Luis Rivera is 19 years old. He is already at the major league level, it would appear, which is out of control. He's under contract forever. 19 years old. Throws 98 with a slider curveball and changeup. Could be a nice prospect for us to develop. And we're getting Yanir Cano, who has been unreal this year in 11 and two thirds innings. We need someone more reliable in our bullpen. I think we just found that guy. John Schreiber's up and performing. I like our bullpen now. Infante is going to be gone probably pretty soon. 
I'm hoping that I can call MacArthur back up at some point. You want to see what he's doing at AAA? He's figuring it out, maybe. 3-6 ERA after getting shelled his first appearance. So, hoping that he gets back to being good, which he was for us. We're the top team right now in the AL Central. I'm looking to keep that up. Luis Rivera, of course, goes to AAA. And he only 5'11", but he throws gas. I'm really interested to see what he's going to look like. Daniel Crowell. Of course, we spent a top pick on him. We found that he was injured. His potential wasn't nearly as high as we thought. His overall wasn't as high as we thought. But he's been solid. 2.86 ERA. Our AAA rotation is pretty good. Frank Mazzucato might be the next to go. Another in real life Royal. He's just, he's been bad. He's been bad. Don't know if I can really trust that. The Master, Chris Bates. Not really striking anybody out. But 3.48 ERA. It's okay. We're pretty happy with that. Nothing crazy. Mason Barnett has been very good, but 25 years old at double A. Bobby Montez, 3.34 ERA with a .99 whip. Again, quite good. We will definitely... I'm, I'm not trying to undersell a 3.48 ERA. It's just not dominant, but it is very solid. The whip from Bobby Montez in a great spot. Again, that's walks and hits per innings pitched. How many base runners do you let on per three outs that you record as a pitcher? Roger Marrero has been pretty good as well. Not really striking anybody out, but his per nines are terrible. 23 years old. I don't know what his future is going to be. And then Ton Caballero is pretty bad, but he's only 18 at double A. That's pretty amazing, but it might be it might be a time to call him down, demote him to double A or single A, I should say. It's something to monitor. I'll say that. Loisaga, finish this one for us. Let's go. Runner on second. Again, Loisaga does not have great pitching clutch. So we really just got to make great pitches. It's 2 3 4 in the order, depending on what happens here. Hopefully, don't get to that cleanup guy. But 2 and 3 is enough of a problem with Dansby Swanson here. Good spot. Decent swing from Swanson. MJ Melendez is there. No opportunity to tag. Not on the former catcher. MJ Melendez has a hose. And then the three hitter, of course, Nico Horner, two for three today. See if we can get him to ground out or something. I'll take a pop up. I think really any type of an out would be great. A hit, not so much. Great spot on the changeup. He's 0 2, and this game is over. Slurve, strike three. Low Isaac sets him down. That pitch is nasty. JD Martinez, broken ankle. No. Two to three months, might as well be 60 day. It's not great. Sam Moles back. Place him on the bench. Blake Mitchell. Uh, we're going to probably activate him for now. And please let me stop the simulation. Pedro Rios, 0 ERA. 14 Ks in 10 innings. MacArthur's back. Yeah, let's make some changes. Neris has been pretty good at uh, AAA, by the way. Small sample size. Pedro Rios. This guy deserves a call-up. Or a promotion, at least, to AAA. We had a lot of relievers right now, though. First things first, though. What do we do with no J.D. Martinez? Pasquantino's playing great, by the way. We're going to D.H. Salvi with no J.D. Martinez. We're going to try hitting him third. We got a lot of lefties in here. But they're our best hitters against righties easily. Well, I'll tell you, these center field prospects are mostly awful. Don't love it. Blake Mitchell, finally, no longer injured. He could be, well, he's going to make a rehab assignment, I guess, right? But he could finally be set to make his MLB debut. The only problem with that is Freddie Fermin's hitting 353 and is working towards everyday playing time. His OPS is over 1,000. Wasn't ready for that, but here it is. All right, we're going to see Anir Cano's series debut. He's been on the team now for a little bit. But series debut with the Royals. He's found himself in a heck of a spot. So we'll see if we can get out Matt Thice here. Automate. Runners on first and second. Make a pitch. And there it is. Three and two. We are fighting back against Wenzel. And we have 99 in our back pocket. Let's dial it up. Strike three. Top of the zone. Goodbye, Wenzel. Wenzel's pretzels. That's not it. Jose Trevino, former Yankee. 
has found his way across the country to Los Angeles. I believe he's a Texas guy, though. Although I think he grew up a Yankees fan. He's down 0-2. And we're going to strike him out. No, we're not. Ground ball. But Trevino is very slow. And that is the game. No, well, it, it, hopefully. That was only the eighth, obviously. But it is not the game yet. Bottom nine, runner on first. Jonathan Loizaga ended for us. That's a perfect bunt. Neto might even reach on this. Nope, he won't, but advances the runner. Runner in scoring position now, which actually does change a lot for Loizaga. Trent Grisham's going to be really patient. This needs to be an out. Got him jammed. We actually might have a play at third here. Loizaga gets the lead runner. Not a smart play, probably. I thought that would be not close. That was really, really close. Loizaga kind of got like a slow animation going to pick up that ball. Can we get a replay? I'm not really sure how that ended up being so close. Because it, it's popped up. The runner's worried about it being caught. And then he tries to make a play. I'm like, Loizaga is going to pick up this ball. He's not even halfway to third yet. This is an easy out, but he takes so many gather steps and then throws an absolute dart to get the lead runner. But that would have been a nightmare if it were first and third with one out. I mean, you still double play would be in order, right? But you'd hate for a big inning to win this game. Because that would be, you know, Mike Trout at the plate. Home run would uh, would certainly end it. It would still end it now. But extra bases uh, could give them the win. Trying to not have that happen. Trout fights off a pitch destined for his kneecap. Here's the one-two. Hanger, that's a, the only pitch Mike Trout can handle. But the good thing about getting the lead runner is it's not tied right now. Why did we throw a breaking ball down to Mike Trout? That's the only pitch he hits on Mike Trout Hager. Not really, but that is true. He, breaking ball down, it's a mistake to Mike Trout. Quickly ahead on Ring Hifo. Oh, not a good spot. Or is it? Ring Hifo, down looking, front door breaking ball ends it. And I think that's a good spot to end the episode. MJ Melendez, two for four with a home run. Robert Gasser continues to pitch okay, I guess. Six hits, four walks. Very lucky to only allow three earned runs. And that's where we're going to stop things. 42 and 31. The Twins are on some type of slide. 36 and 34. Really just not playing all that well. We're approaching the All-Star break and, of course, the trade deadline. But, of course, the all-star break now is the MLB draft. We have some more work to do with scouting. And uh, hopefully we can find somebody down the board that's going to help us win in the next couple of years. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.